Well, here we are. We're going to locate three skylights into a ceiling. What I'm doing here is locating the skylight placement roughly with blue painter's tape. I adjust the location a couple of times to achieve perfect symmetry. The three skylights are to be centered between four window units. I take the center measurement, 2 and 5 16 and transfer it to a marking stick where I can locate the exact center line for all three units. I also know that the windows are symmetrically placed because I relocated them to be so last week. Here I'm snapping the center lines with a chalk line three times for the vertical placement and once for the horizontal. Instead of a tape measure, I like to use marking blocks that are one half the width and height of the rough opening. Typically, you would add three inches plus for the double header and footer framing, but since I want the trim to be flush with the ceiling, I'll add three inches to each side as well. This allows for the trim to be one by four stock. The ceiling will be primed and painted, so I screw a saw guide for my skill saw on the ceiling, an inch and a half away from the line. The black hose is for my shop vac and it's switched to blow the dust away as I cut. Here I'm slowly and carefully guiding the saw into the ceiling. Safety glasses, hearing protection, and respirator of course. I finish up the cuts with a jigsaw. After removing the boards and nails I see that there is a vapor barrier and insulation that need to be removed. I also see that whoever did the ceiling before and constructed the roof used half inch sheathing for the roof, noting that the one by one strut screwed into it between the rafters. Not a recommended practice, by the way. Squaring off the rafters with a combination square, carefully cut away the rafters, keeping them as square as possible. A doubled up two by six for the header and footer, and right top and bottom of the skylight, screwed into the next available rafter. Reinsulate the rafter bays, run the vertical rafter framing, and you're ready to sawzall out the hole. I threw a makeshift handle into the sheathing to make the removal bit a little bit easier. Once you have a hole, you need to carefully remove all the shingles that adjoin where the skylight will be. Very carefully as I don't have any new shingles to play with. Remove the shingles up to the next full shingle and the top will need an extra course or so removed to allow room for the skylight head flashing. An old chisel or screwdriver will work for easing up the nails enough to slide the nail puller thing underneath them. I also use wedges to ensure I don't damage the skylights as I work. The uh, roofer had applied the shingles in a one course stagger pattern, probably working by himself so he could do small sections at a time while keeping the rest of the roof covered. I don't like to roof that way because the shingles are only staggered by one and it's not as structurally sound or aesthetically pleasing as half tabbing your way across the full run of the roof. I like to keep the shingles on the same course that I removed them so that you know it's easier to reinstall them. Though on a hot day it's good to stack them on something in a top down order and two piles, one for each side. It's very important to make sure that your squared rough opening matches the skylight. So put center marks on each side of the skylight and align it with the center marks from the ceiling. Once centered, hop outside and fasten. I use exterior flathead screws instead of nails, less chance of the skylight slipping off center. Screw from side to side and then opposite corners. I do that for absolutely no particular reason, though I'm sure I can make up something. Do be careful where you walk. Have some scrap cardboard around for tools and kneeling, and remember that proper footwear is a must. Next, I want you to take the tape off and remove the over flashing. You're going to want to set that aside for later use. And do be careful as it's kind of flimsy and you don't want to bend it in the process of relocating it. So, uh, the next part of this project is, is probably the most challenging, is working with ice and water shield. In the hot sun, it's quite entertaining, and what I've done here is I've sped the film up to show that unlike the fancy home improvement shows, it is a pain in the butt to apply. I roll a bit of the backing off to make sure the application works a little easier, and then I lift the rubber gasket on the skylight and attach the nasty stuff all the way up past the wood, right up to the rim of the skylight. This is also a great time to work on building up your vocabulary, as you can see I'm doing here. Next, be very careful, but cut the ice and water shield about, oh, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or so up from the bottom. You're going to pull it tight and stretch the bottom down with your finger, pushing it down so that you actually stretch the membrane to adhere to the corner of the skylight. Work both sides and then do the top in the same manner. The next part of this is to slide the bottom flashing unit into place and attach. I ran a course of shingles or two as it were, so the flashing sits on top of the shingles. Since I'm reusing the old shingles, only a little bit of removal is needed, about a quarter to a half inch. 
What I like to do is use uh, a framing square and a scrap piece of plywood. And as you can see here, I use clear flashing compound. This clear flashing compound is ideal for roofing. You use it for sealing the old holes and running underneath the shingles and step flashing. The shingles need to stay secure in stormy weather or windy weather and this does the trick quite nicely. The skylight flashing kit, which is purchased separately by the way, includes nearly everything you need, including the step flashing which is applied snugly against the frame of the skylight. Apply liberal amounts of cop caulking compound to everything that you do. That's very important. This next part, you'll notice that I've sped things up again to provide an overall rhythm of how things work and the order in which they're done. And it also is kind of funny because it's entertaining to watch. Whee! All right, this next part involves the top flashing unit which has a curb extension piece tucked into it, which you would only use if you had two to three layers of old shingles on the roof. Otherwise, remove and discard, and then hammer down the top lip and slide it underneath the shingles, as shown here. Secure each side and avoid nailing the flashing across the top of the skylight. Use an embarrassing amount of caulking on all shingles that go across the top of the skylight. The next part is reinstalling that flimsy piece of curb flashing. You slide it into the head flashing unit and after it is in, you should be able to bend the little tabs on each side to lock it into place. And as you can see, here we have the finished skylights. They are in place and will provide many, many years of beautiful natural light. I hope that this tutorial has been able to illuminate the process of installing a skylight with the least amount of fuss and headache. Oh, and don't forget to remind me to uh, grab that uh, leftover step flashing. Hope you've enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time.